Okay. I think we're live. I, I think we're live. Right. Good evening, everybody. We are not back with anything. We're just today. We're gonna start a new let's play. My controller is messing up. Holy shit! Hold on. Let me just. Are you okay now? Yes. No. What? Excuse me. <laughs> controller, what are you doing? Okay. Are you fine now? All right. I think you're fine now. Okay. Good evening, everybody. We and yeah, we are. What is going on with this freaking thing? Anyways, tonight we're gonna start Ratchet and Clank. That's what I've been trying to say. Um, I've been pretty excited to start this one for a while, and again, I was going to start ahead in time, but you know that just that didn't happen. So um, we're doing this instead, and I hope my controller actually fixes itself, because uh, that is that was weird. But anyways, um, I did uh, what's the name? Warning, if you have a history of epilepsy or seizures, consult the doctor before you use certain patterns may trigger seizures with no problem. Blah. Anyway, so what I was going to say is that, um, yeah, I was going to stream ahead in time if that game had, you know, actually come out on time for us to stream. But, uh, well, I'm on PS4, I mean, because, I mean, it's been out on Steam for a pretty long time already, but it never came out over the PS4, so, um... You know, we're playing this instead and still gonna have a lot of fun with this, so, you know, I'm excited. It is a Ratchet and Clank collection on PS3, of course. So, um... Okay, let's just go ahead and start the game, because that's kind of loud. But anyways, uh... Yeah, so, I have this listed as the, um... As the, uh, PS4 remake on the, uh... Like, on the Twitch page. But that's not actually true. Um, we're playing the original on, you know, the original version of this game. But the reason I have that version on Twitch is because it's not giving me the option to put the original, which is really stupid. But whatever. So um, I hope anyone that stumbles up upon this st the stream thinking that it's the original Ratchet and Clank, I mean, the, the new Ratchet and Clank doesn't get too disappointed when it's not. But that's okay. Anyways, um... I'm gonna lower the sound a little bit, because... Because I do think it might be kind of loud, but, um... Hopefully it's not too loud. I think I did a little bit of sound testing before I started this, which is why I kind of started a little late. But, uh... Hopefully it'll be okay. If someone comes into the stream and lets me know how I'm doing, that that would be pretty good. But uh, anyways, yeah, let's go ahead and just start a new game. It's a pretty simple start screen over here. Anyways, let's just start here in slot number two, because that's, that's the thing I was just using to, um, like, test this. So, yeah. Anyways, we're also going to go ahead and just... There's actually no dialogue in the intro cutscene, but uh, I'm still going to shut up for it, because... This is not a game I can actually commentate over the scenes quite as easy as it's something with like Tales of Symphonia or Klonoa 2. Which is what we were playing before. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna be quiet for the cutscenes in this game. Okay. Final step, attach robotic ignition system. Thank you for using help desk technology. Thank you. 
Okay. Well, my controller fine now. Okay, I think it's fine now. We're here to offer you advice during your interplanetary travels. The help desk is a free service provided by Gadgetron Corporation. Cool. Anyway, so um since we're playing the PS3 version, I would like to point out that it does look better, you know. It ha it runs at 60 FPS just like the original and you know, it runs at higher resolution, but there are a few issues. First of all, you may have noticed that there was some weird stuttering on the cutscenes. That's not actually part of the stream, that's part of the game. So, you know, they could have done a bit better with that. And, um... The actual cutscenes, you know, like the CG rendered cutscenes, they were not upscaled properly. So they're still in, like, standard definition, like, standard resolution. And, uh... You know, that's kind of weird, but those, those are about the only issues with the, um, with the, uh, HD remaster, not enough to, like, you know, to, like, not make me want to play the original version of PS2 instead, which I do have it, but, um, you know, this is technically the better version to play this game in. Anyway, so, yeah, this is Ratchet, this is cool, the, the one over there we just saw in the cutscene, that's Clank, of course, because they're the titular characters, but, uh, we're technically not supposed to be introduced to them yet, but that's pretty obvious who they are. Anyways, um, yeah, we just, this is a, an action platformer, so, hold on, my controls are weird, what's, what's, what's going on, camera? V reverse that, reverse that too. And, uh, okay, that's pretty fine, but, okay, good. Never mind, no, not good, hold on. Jeez, wait, what's, no, hold on. Okay, that's not actually reversed, that's normal. That's reversed, okay, yeah, good. Anyways, and the way, the way I like my camera is... It's kind of hard to explain, like, I like the... I imagine the joystick, the position of the joystick itself is the camera. So... You know... That's just kind of... It, it, it makes sense to me. I know it doesn't make sense to a lot of people, but it makes sense to me. Anyway, so this is an action platformer, so there is platforming and there is also action. As in... You know, our... It basically works like any other platformer, but our range of attacks is a little bit more... Varied than average, and that's thanks to the weapon system. So we have weapons. If you've never played a Ratchet and Clank game before, then... Uh, uh, don't worry, you Things will start making sense soon enough. For example, yeah, so we just... So our standard weapon is actually a bomb glove, so we just, like... Throws a bomb and things explode. And we will get, as you can see here in the weapons section, plenty of other weapons, because there's plenty of slots over there. So that's gonna be fun. Again, I am... I did kind of try to make it sound like... I wasn't excited to play this game because of a head in time, but no, in, in, in actuality I do. Definitely, wait, hold on, subtitles on, Jesus. Okay. I do definitely want to play this game, you know, it's... It is... The Ratchet & Clank franchise is one of my favorite franchises of all time, easily. And Ra the original Ratchet & Clank is one of my favorites in the franchise itself. It's not my absolute favorite. Thank you for letting me know. Uh, it is not my absolute favorite. I think that's what actually goes to Going Commando because that's just the one I grew up with, so I have nostalgia for it. But um, I do still love the original trilogy, and the other ones are pretty good as well. You know, I'm not I'm not so sure about the new newer ones, like All for One and Full Front of Us. Hold that one's weird, but um, uh, the old ones are pretty freaking good. Okay. So, you might have noticed we've been collecting this, like, bolts and screws and things. Though That is basically the currency of this game. And again, I'm pretty sure, I know Ratchet & Clank is a... Held, basically, that's what that is. Anyways, uh, so, I know Ratchet & Clank is a pretty popular franchise, so... Probably a few people watching this are familiar with it. But for those who aren't, you know, I'm trying to... I like to treat my let my streams and my let's plays as with the possibility that the people watching have never played the game before, no matter how, um, no matter how you how popular or rare the game might be. So you know we could 
we could be playing Super Mario 64 at one point, and I'm still gonna treat it as if maybe someone has never played Super Mario 64 before, because, man, you never know. Okay, you. That is kind of funny over here. This guy's just teasing the other guy, and he's just out of range. And they just programmed it so that he wouldn't actually be able to get close. So that's just... It's kind of dumb, but it freaking works. Okay, you know what? Anyways, um... It's not too bad so far, and it's, the game isn't too challenging right now, but uh, as it progresses, it will definitely get a bit more challenging. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, so the first-person perspective, you can't do that, but um, unfortunately, you don't have a reticule. Okay, I. If you hold all L1 and then also hold R1, you can get a reticule for the uh, for the wrench, but uh, not for your weapons. You actually have to you know, pull out your weapons and see what happens with that. So, anyways, hold on. Okay, hold on. There we go. If you get too close, then they're actually going to start backing up. So. I I wanted to take it from a distance. Anyways, uh, yeah, so again, pretty self explanatory game. Um, it will get a bit more complicated as we progress, and you know, with gadgets and different puzzles elements. But overall, this is gonna be a fun time. I've beaten this game like 50 times, <laughs> so I know what I'm doing. It's okay. I'm, I haven't played it in a bit, but uh, it'll, it'll come back to me pretty quickly. Uh, so, it is our destination. I'm gonna shut up now. Interesting. You're quite handy with your wrench. You bet. I built that ship with it. Hmm. Currently, I'm in search of someone who could be of assistance in saving the solar system. Do you know where I might find that fellow? Well, he's on the radio every week. Other than that, no. Hey, what's with all this save the solar system stuff anyway? Hello, citizens of... My race, the Blog, have a small problem. Our planet has become so polluted, overpopulated, and poisonous that we are no longer able to dwell here. But I, Chairman Drek, have a solution. We are constructing a pristine new world using the choicest planetary components available. So, what does this mean to you, you might ask? Using highly sophisticated technology, which you couldn't possibly understand, we will be extracting a large portion of your planet and adding it to our new one. Unfortunately, this change in mass will cause your planet to spin out of control and drift into the sun where it will explode into a flaming ball of gas. But, of course, sacrifices must be made. <laughs> Thank you for your cooperation. And if you don't like it, you can take your whiny, sniveling, snot-nosed populations, form a line behind me, and kiss my... We're still on? Look, turn it off, you idiot! The people on those planets are hosed. Well, good luck getting Captain Quark to help you. Actually, you could help me. If you could use your ship to take me to the coordinates contained in this infobot, I might be able to gather further information there. Even if I wanted to, I can't. I'm missing a crucial component of the ship. The robotic ignition system. How did you know that? I, sir, happen to be equipped with the latest in robotic ignition systems. My programming allows me to start any ship I choose. So, I agree to take you to this wherever it is, and you get my ship started for me? That is what I'm proposing. Deal. This could be a problem. Take care of it. Whoa, this is great! So that's where I've been stuck this whole time. Please return your appendages to the steering mechanism, sir. Huh? Oh, right. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, and by the way, 
You could stop calling me sir. The name's Ratchet. Pleased to make your acquaintance, sir. You got a name? My serial number is B54296. Oops. I'll just call you Clank for short. Hang on. So you see, it would be most beneficial if your citizens were not in the city when my workers begin removing it. Preposterous! I will not stand for this! Unfortunately, you have no choice in the matter. Let's just see what Captain Quark has to say about that, my good man. <laughs> I don't see what's so funny. Captain Quark could dispatch you without even breaking a sweat, you, you puny. You have now officially worn out your welcome and my patience. This is your last chance. Stop this madness now! Okay, wait. You're right. I will withdraw my troops. Really? No! He's all yours, gentlemen. Try not to leave any marks. Sorry about that. Well, we're not leaving the way we came in. Perhaps we could procure a ship from one of the inhabitants. If there are any left. So unfortunately for some reason the um... Okay, so for some reason when the um... In the CG cutscenes, you know, like the pre-rendered cutscenes, uh, there are no subtitles for those, even if you turn them on, which is really dumb. I don't know why that's a thing, but uh, it's a thing. Uh, the in-engine cut cutscenes, yeah, those are rendered fine. I mean, those are subtitles, but uh, the CG cutscenes are just not going to have subtitles for some reason. So, uh, if you're not a native, a native English speaker, I am sorry, but uh, there's not much I can do about that. Uh, you're just going to have to... <laughs> pay a lot of more attention to the thing I guess anyway so this is the weapon shop so this is where you can buy ammunition for weapons you already have or buy new weapons and we don't have enough money for that so there's not that much I can do but uh we are going to go out of our way to as much as possible to get old bolts because um well money is great first of all and second um bolts are just really fun to collect like just in general, they're they're easily one of the most fun collectibles to collect that I've ever seen in a game. I'm not entirely sure what it is about them. Maybe it's just the noise they make and how they fly towards you. And when you get like a billion of them in one screen, it's just it's it's awesome. But um. Yeah, so we're just gonna be going out of our way to getting as many balls as possible. But uh, that's what as many bosses there are down here, so as far as I'm seeing. Um, anyways, yeah, so... I know that's a weird thing to praise, you know, like the, the satisfaction of collectibles, but I do think that's a pretty important thing in, uh, in Collectathon spe specifically. I mean, it's not really a Collectathon, but it does have collection elements thanks to these things. So, uh, yeah. Also, some items in the environment are destructible like this mushrooms and specifically not all the mushrooms just some of them are destructible and uh which ones you're just gonna have to experiment to find out but um usually they drop bolts not always there are actually a couple of items that don't drop anything but uh you know you just gotta do what you can anyway so right now we're not getting a whole lot of bolts for our efforts, I mean, we're, okay, we're, getting, we're getting pretty good right now, but as the game progresses, the uh, bolt gain, you know, per items or per boxes, per enemies, that does go up. Not as much as it does in the sequels, because in the sequels they start introducing a lot more kinds of bolts and, uh, you know, but um, in this game you don't get as many bolts, but at the same time you don't need as many bolts as you do in the sequels. Like, you would never need a million bolts, Sony. Why would you put a trophy? To get a million bolts on Ratchet and Clank one, you nobody needs that many. Hey, I still got that trophy because you know, f 
fuck my life, but uh, yeah, this, again, this is it's, it's probably the most we're gonna be getting in this game is somewhere around the hundred, the one hundred something thousand, because uh, the most expensive weapon in the game is like a hundred and fifty thousand or something like that. Uh, I'm not sure if we're actually gonna be bothering with that, but we, I do kind of want to complete this game a hundred percent because it is pretty fun to complete and uh yeah also these pools i don't know why they're here you can go down but don't you don't get anything for it only the first pool that we haven't had anything unless there's some weird like super hidden easter egg that i'm not aware of that might be the case i don't know anyways so the wrench is pretty useful all things considered um i mean it's not the best weapon obviously but it does not use ammo and you know it works pretty well all the weapons in this on, on Ratchet and Clank 1 are fairly balanced uh, in the later games they kind of some of them kind of start becoming useless because they just get so powerful but anyways there's a secret here and this is a gold bolt so those are one of the kind of collectibles in this game and um, they uh, they serve no port no purpose right now and they won't for a while but um we will try to collect all of them I think I think I remember where all of them are and how to get all of them but um not a hundred percent so, you know, if, if there's any bolts I end up missing, or any skill points, which, you know, that's something else that we end up uh, not getting when we're closer to the end of the game, that I might, like, in the final stream that we do of this, like, take a moment to go back to all the previous levels and get all the missing gold bolts and all the missing skill points and stuff like that. We haven't, mi we haven't gotten any skill points yet, but, um, you know, that's something we will do eventually. Alright, anyways, um... Let's see. So that was that section. That was entirely useless, by the way. There was no, there were no key items over there. It was just for funsies. How much money do I? Oh, now I have enough. Okay, so let's go ahead and. Uh, Hi there, Fuzzball. Yeah, let's go ahead and buy this. Who? Oh. So in Ratchet and Clank One, you actually get a cutscene for every weapon you buy. Uh, it's not very. Like awesome looking cutscenes or anything, but it is a nice little touch. So now we have the Pyrocitor. Uh, it, it appears here on our menu. And once we get, as you can see, the uh, the quick select only has space for one, two, three, four, five, six. It only has space for eight weapons. So once we have more than eight, we can um, will be uh, we'll have to choose which weapons to bring and which ones to not bring. So this is where we've set that up, and uh, towards towards the end of the game, I probably am only gonna have a, a handful of weapons. But um, anyways, let's go ahead and come in here. You don't have to go the right the, the route that I'm taking, but I just personally like to take this route. Anyway, so the paralysis is obviously a flamethrower. It works a lot better for small swarms of enemies than it does for like big for like you know big strong guys but that you want to use different weapons ow yes I, I figured that out on my own help desk lady you're not very helpful help desk lady I don't know why but also by the way you can if you double tap triangle you will instantly switch back to the to the previous weapon you had so uh you know, if you're only using two weapons, you can actually just, you know, do that. It'll be a lot faster. But anyways, uh, let's see. There's a couple of balls down here. Uh, not a whole lot of them, but, you know, I like to get them. And... You will obviously die if you run out of oxygen there, but thankfully this game has... It gives you infinite lives. But the checkpoint system is not very generous. So we can die as much as we want. But that doesn't mean we should. Because it's gonna... Every time we die, it's gonna have some pretty severe consequences. Uh, having to do an entire section all over again. 
I don't want to do that. Okay. But anyways, uh, again, I should, I, I will, we're obviously gonna die a couple of times. It's, it's gonna happen, but um, I'll try to be as, try to have as much control of that as I can. Also, um, you might be used to this in some other games, but uh, in this game, bolts never disappear. You know, if you have, if there's a bolt, like dropped by a crate or an enemy, like at the other side of the level, that bolt will stay there until you pick it up. And if a bolt falls on water or on an endless pit, it'll just automatically come towards you. So, yeah, you will never, like, miss out on bolts unless you just intentionally choose not to get them. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty cool. Thankfully, I know so much about this game that I can keep a consistent commentary. But, uh, you know, in other games, I might not be able to do that so much. Ow, don't hit me. Okay, anyways. You can also lure the enemies into killing each other sometimes. It's kind of just dumb. I'm pretty sure they programmed that just just so that players could have fun with that shit. But, uh, yeah. Anyways, did I miss something? No, I can't. I didn't miss anything. And the only thing we could miss right now is balls. So, you know. Anyways. Balls are a little bit more difficult to see in this game because they they're gray and like copper. So those colors don't really stand out too much. Like this they, they have a shine also. This I think is something we'll be using later. But they do have a little bit of a light, a shine with them, so they are a little bit easier to see thanks to that. But in the later games they just made them freaking gold. Which you know that makes them stand out a lot easier. Um but that's okay, we're still gonna be, you know, getting as many balls as possible. And, uh, yeah, you can kind of tell that each ball has a different, um, you know, amount of gain that you get from them. From them. Uh, like, the very basic ones just kind of look like screws. And then there's some that kind of look like, you know, like, these ones are only worth one as far as, yeah, those are only worth one. And then the copper ones are worth, like, five, and then, you know, there's... Like one more kind of one, like three probably or something like that. I'm not knowledgeable or to the fullest, but hey. Also, um, I can actually see the um. Oh, this one, I can actually see the the water meter over there on the right. I can't actually see it on the TV screen, but on the on the stream window, I'm seeing like right there, over to the right, the the oxygen meter. It's kind of noticeable here, but I'm not sure. Like, I guess they, um... I guess the oxygen meter is actually always there. Or at least on the on the water levels. Well, not water levels. The levels that have water in them. But, um... You know, it, it was hidden on the original PS2 version. Because, you know, that one wasn't quite as widescreen and, you know, high definition as this HD remaster. So, you know, they kind of forgot to put it further to the right so that it wouldn't be visible. But, uh, you know what? That's okay. Okay, you can't, you, you can't always win those, man. Alright, so we... Okay, so we gotta go over here first. Take care of these guys, too. And... Just take care of these guys as well. Also, you can actually throw your wrench towards bolts, and it'll grab them. Uh, so, it's not the most efficient method, but uh, it does kind of work. Um, but, uh, what's I gonna say? Uh, we will later, like much later, get an item that just allows us to get bolts easier. So, we won't be having to deal with that anymore. But, uh, still, they have some... Kind of like I think the range of bolts, you know, like like the magnetism of bolts, I guess, towards Ratchet is more or less the same as the range of gems towards Spyro, because you know both Spyro and Insomnia and uh, Ratchet and Clank are made by Insomnia Games, so it's natural that there will be some kind of similarities in there, and there are some similarities between Ratchet and Clank and Spyro, but uh, they do definitely stand as individual games, you know, they're not 
They're not similar enough to really be called spiritual successors or anything like that. It's just you can tell they're made by the same company. Okay. Hello? I help you by murderizing you just like you've been murderizing the people of this city. Town. What are we exactly? Like. It's not a city, it's just kind of like an like the outskirts somewhere that I mean, there's, okay, there's a lot of water and, you know, like, sewers and stuff, so there's probably some kind of... something. Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. So, what are you? Mercenaries? Torturers? Assassins? I, I, I'll tell you anything. Here, take my info bot. It's all I've got left. Sir, we're not assassins. Hold on. Let's see what he's got. Has this ever happened to you? Hi, I'm Captain Quark, and believe me, there's nothing worse than staring down a Blargy and Snaggle Beast from the inside and knowing your equipment isn't functioning properly. That's why I come to Al's Robo Shack for all my electronic needs. Al has been the exclusive repair shop for my super electro gadgets since I was knee high to a sand mouse. If Al can't fix it, it's not broke. Right, Al? You said it, pal. So if you're fighting crime, or just fighting grime, <laughs> come to Al's RoboShack in Metropolis for all your robotic repairs. Al's RoboShack, it's quarktastic! Do you know what this means? Yeah, Captain Quark is really sold out. No, it means Captain Quark is on Metropolis. We could tell him about this invasion. If we had a ship. <laughs> what? Uh, a ship? What? You're not going to torture me? Well, as planetary chairman, and I could arrange for you to borrow our courier ship. Cool. You can count on us, sir. Right. Thank you, your chairman shipliness. Gadgetron Infobots give you coordinates for new planets. You should press the select button to bring up the map and go to your ship. It's oh. Stop. It, you can stop now. Okay, um... So that is how you get new levels in this game. You, um... You need to do a particular cypress that will give you coordinates to a new place. And, uh, Metropolis, that's gonna be a pretty important place. Like, like half of the Ratchet and Clan games have Metropolis in them. It's kind of, kind of like the Green Hill Zone of, this, of the Ratchet and Clan franchise. But, um, maybe not quite as bad. Um, but anyways, I'm gonna say something. Yeah, um, this comedy... This comedy. This game has a lot of comedy in it, but uh, it tr it definitely tries to have comedy in like every possible scenario. So sometimes it'll be pretty funny, other times it'll just kind of flop. But uh, whatever, it is part of the charm of the game. It is fun, a fun time. Anyways, um, we can get another planet coordinates in this way, so uh, that's what we want to do. Okay, so by, we can't actually get every item in this um, in this level yet, but we will be able to come back to this place later with some new items and you know get what we're missing. Okay, I like to juke enemies sometimes, but most of the time it doesn't actually work in my favor. Hold on. Okay. So of course there are also ammo cr ammo crates for. Pretty much all the weapons, except the ones that don't use ammo. There's a couple of weapons that don't use ammo, if I'm not mistaken. Hello, there's a gold ball here. That's why I did that. But, um... Sometimes we might be pretty low on ammo, so it might actually be better to just go to a... to the weapon vendor and buy weapons over there. Also, the double jump in this game and going commando is pretty freaking pathetic. Like, look at the height of just one jump. Then look at the double jump. It, I don't think it actually changes. All it does is give you a little bit more air time, but that's about it. Uh, so, yeah, the, the double jump in this first game is pretty not very good. But in the... Uh, when Ratchet and Clank 3, I think that's what they finally did it right. Except, okay, we can actually up upgrade the double jump, but right now it's... I feel like it shouldn't have even been added. They would have, it would have been fine without the double jump until they actually give you the ability of it. Kind of like Ratchet. I mean, not Ratchet. Kind of like how um, Crash Bandicoot did. Also, you can actually run into this. And he does the taking hit animation. 
but uh, he doesn't actually take damage. Which is weird. Whatever. Okay. Any more enemies around here? No, actually, it's empty. Okay, whatever. Um, so again, I'm pretty sure I remember not every single secret, but like the majority of them. So we're gonna be doing that. Uh, these things you can break them, but there's no reason to. They don't actually give you anything. It's just decoration, I guess. Immersion, <laughs> immersion props is what I like to call them. Okay, but um, yeah. Let's see. This platform's over here also. Again, immersion props. You don't actually need to use them. You just need to come over here and you know do that. Now I'm sure some of like the speedrunners of the Ratchet and Clank franchise probably figured out ways to use items that the developers were not intended to. And I've seen a couple of Ratchet and okay, not a couple, but I've seen a speedrun of this first Ratchet and Clank and. Some of the things the person did was for like, what in the sh what are you doing? I was so confused, and then you know, I actually ran into what he was doing, and that was pretty... It's pretty spooky, some of the stuff you can do if you know all the ins and outs of this game, but um... I know all the- I know pretty much all the ins and outs of the standard, you know, non-breaking the game. I know- I know a couple of things we can do to break it, but uh... Nothing like what speedrunners can do. Anyways, this is an important cuts in here. And it. <laughs> look, plumber's crack. What did you just say? I said, look, the plumber's back. All right, wise guy. Shouldn't you be on one of them escape transports? Escape transports? Newsflash, giant robots attacking. The escape transports are taking all the rich folks off this god darn planet. So why aren't you on one? Socioeconomic disparity. What? He hasn't got enough bolts. Working people have to wait for Captain Quark to save us. Well, got anything worth a lot of bolts? I got this thing. Shows two weirdos ditching their ship. It's got coordinates to a desert planet, too. An infobot. Ratchet, we could use that. So, this guy is a plumber. He is... Easily one of the most iconic, like, NPCs in the Ratchet and Clank franchise, so much so that he is my BRB screen. I mean, it's not a particularly impressive BRB screen, but it's what I could muster in, it's what, it's what I could figure out to make in like five minutes, so uh, give me a break on that one. But, um, anyways, we'll be seeing this guy come back in like every game. Like, I'm pretty sure, like, every game he comes back in some way, shape, or form. He's never too important, but he's always there, and that's always nice. But anyways, gotta go ahead and get more cuts in here. Geronimo! Did he just slide down a sewer pipe? Mayday, mayday! This is the solar ship Radical. We seem to be under attack from the planet's surface. Relax, kid. It looks like some sort of fireworks display. Probably in your honor. Whoa! That was close! Ah! Pipe down, I can't concentrate. Oh, we've been hit! Uh, an unexpected detour. When we land, I'll see if I can scare up an exhibition for you. We're not gonna live that long! Kid, let's am scream! Eject! Eject! Did you see that guy on the left? That was Skid McMarks. Does he know Captain Quark? I doubt it. He's a pro hoverboarder, always going off about how cool he is. Looks like he's in trouble. I'll say. I've never seen him look so freaked out. There seems to be a stutter on the cutscenes like every time they're about to end. So if you're ever wondering when a cutscene is going to end in this game, that's when it does. Anyways, uh, here's some. Here you can get a better look of the chaos that is happening across the planet. You know, stuff being attacked by ships and uh, we will be dealing with those ships um, much later uh, but right now there's not much we can do but uh, yeah anyways let's, uh, let's just get out of here let's skedaddle okay uh, so obviously this was, this was a Mario reference right here you know plumbers sl sliding down a sewer pipe and uh, actually, I actually didn't ca catch that the first time I played this game because uh, because ba back in the day, I had a really hard time with context clues. Like, you could you could tell me something straight 
like indirectly but pretty much straight to my face and I wouldn't figure it out if it wasn't explicitly spelled out to me. I was I was not the brightest kid back in the day, but hey, I've I've matured, I figured out how the world works and you know stuff, I I think I I would I, I would like to think that way at least. Anyway, so we have two choices now. We can either go to Cur One with Metropolis or Baradia in Outpost X eleven. We well I like to go to Petropolis first. So we need a couple of items from here. We basically if we go to to Aradia first, we're not actually gonna be able to complete it. So we should go to Metropolis first anyways. But uh, you know, we gotta visit Al Shoboshack and a couple of other things actually. Probably gonna be a cousin here by the way, if I'm not mistaken. Or not. Hold on, is there? No. Okay. Sometimes there is a cutscene between the transition of planets. Uh, not here. Sometimes it, not the time it does. So this is the first time we're actually landing normally. Now of course you can skip that cutscene. We will skip it except for when we get a new ship. Because we can't get new ships. But um, you know. So again. Metropolis. This probably in 2002. This was like mind blowing, probably. And I mean, even today, I still argue this is one of the most detailed, like awesome-looking cities on a on a PS2 game. And you know, like in general speaking, not just PS2 actually, but uh. Obviously, new Ratchet and Clank games have gotten their own versions of Metropolis that. Obviously, look better. Yeah, okay, I know. Is something wrong with my controls? Or am I going insane? I'm actually. Hold on. No, I think it's fine. It's just. Okay. I don't know. Sometimes I like. Like my brain just dies and it doesn't figure out what it wants to do with. How it wants the camera. But anyways, we have enough to buy the blaster. Or should I buy it? Uh, sure, why not? Honestly, it's gonna be useful. Anyway, so this is pretty much just a standard, you know, like weapon. Works as you would expect, and these are explosive crates. So, you know, you, you hit them from a distance and they explode. Or what we can also do is when I find another one is you can just touch it. And uh, it'll start a countdown. That works fine too. But anyways, um, our destination is over there. You can see Al's RoboShack symbol right there. But uh, that's that way. We're going this way first because there's another thing I want to get over here. On. Welcome to the Captain Quark Fitness Course. If you're strong enough, fast enough, and clever enough to beat my fitness challenge, you will receive a reward from my head trainer. Simply make your way to the third island to complete the course. Good luck. Quark Enterprises is not responsible for sprains, broken bones, snapped tendons, bruised egos, or accidental death incurred while taking the challenge. Excuse me, Captain, but we have more pressing issues. We urgently need your assistance. Clank? Yes? Do you notice anything unusual about Captain Quark? Well, I find the fact that he has a spring where his leg should be to be quite puzzling. And why do you think that is? Possibly an injury incurred while battling evil? This isn't the real Captain Quark, you numbskull. It's a robot. Oh. So despite the fact that there are robots in this galaxy, they don't really act much different from humans. Really, they're just metallic. They're just metallic humans. Well, not humans. Um, people. So, um, what is that? No. Okay, it's probably the cars flying around, but still, that's weird. Stop that. Okay, but whatever. Um, we're gonna need a couple of bolts when we get up there. So, uh, I I hope there's enough on the way. If not, then uh, we'll just travel out and you know come back later or something. Actually, maybe we should do this part later. Maybe. Do I need... The, hmm. I think I do need it. Or do I? Hey, whatever. It's just... Hold on. There's a couple crates over here. 
I hope I'll be able to get enough uh, bolts to uh, to buy the thing that we're going to need to buy. Yeah, okay, we're making some okay money. Let's see. Maybe I'm... <laughs> or maybe I should have hold off on that blaster. Okay. But whatever, we're fine. We'll, uh, we'll figure it out. Okay, so here's how the crates work if you just touch them. You know, they have a bit of a countdown and... Uh, I guess you can do strategic explosions if you so desire, but I, I'm not sure if that's something we can do a whole lot of. Alright, but whatever. Let's, uh, let's keep going here. Okay, I don't, I don't think I'm actually going to make enough bolts. That's fine. We'll, uh, we'll come back once we have enough. Eh. Okay, let's go up here. There's also um, there's an achievement that you can get. Not oh, achievement, a skill point. Uh, for completing this like obstacle course under a certain amount of time. And hello, there's a gold ball over there. It's just, it's just just sitting right there, but uh, we can't get there right now, so we'll come back for that later. Um, but yeah, um, we're gonna. So once we're done with this level, we're probably gonna come back to this area and just do this thing all over again by completing it faster. Or at least I think there's a skill point for it. If not, then uh, my bad. But uh, I do believe there is one. Okay. Technically I shouldn't do that, but you know that. Okay. Shit. <gasps> okay, I know, I know, lady. Hold down. Um I know there's some tricks you can do with those things, so I'm gonna see if I can figure it out just fine. Okay. Okay. So I believe Yeah, if you just get like hook the wall as much as possible, you can actually just those jump pads, uh, even when the walls are, ret are retracted. But um, I'm not actually completely sure about that. Uh, come on, get moving here. Okay. So this is real. Um, we're gonna need a special gadget to get down there. From here, because if we try to jump from here, it's, it's not gonna reach. I can assure you, we're not gonna make it. So, um, yeah, we'll come back here later. And yeah, I don't think I'm gonna make enough bolts. I think I, need, I think I need a thousand. I might need less. I might need more, but I'm pretty sure I need a thousand for something over here. Anyways, let's just shut up for the next cutscene. Listen up, you loud balls. That was the most pathetic display I have ever seen on that obstacle course! What do you mean? We finished the circuit, ma'am. Oh yeah, but it was weak. Weak, weak! Then I was competing. I would devour courses like that for breakfast! <laughs> Bet that's not all. If it were up to me, you would drill, drill, drill for the rest of the day! But somehow you managed to impress that fool Captain Quark! Captain Quark knows about us? He certainly does. And worst of all, he wants me to give you a prize for that ridiculous performance. Cool, what is it? I'm supposed to give you a swing shot, so you can sway to and fro like little insects. All right, let's see it. Not so fast. Today, the two of you disgraced my obstacle course, so I am going to make you pay. But that prize is ours from the captain. That's not fair. Too bad, life's not fair. I'm not sure who decided to make her German, but you know what? That's okay. This is. I don't, okay, I think her name is Helga. Helga. I might be mistaken, but uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, we need a thousand. There's a couple of boxes here, but I don't think it's gonna be enough. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure it's not gonna be enough. Uh, yeah. So we're gonna be coming back here, you know, later once we once we got what we need. Um. For now, all we can do is leave by a taxi. You know, not in, in style like we would be able to do otherwise. But yeah, we'll be coming back here with more money. And I'll try to... And we're actually back here. I'll try to do it as fast as possible so that I can... Uh, so that I can get that skill point that I believe exists, but I'm not actually sure if it does. Alright. 
I can probably make the, the thousand that I need real quick over here, actually. Um, also, I believe there's... Can I get down there from here? Uh, I'll try later. Okay. There's something I can do down there. Oh! That might actually be useful, because I never use that feature, but I know it's there and I should probably use it. Okay, I forgot, this is Ratchet and Clank 1, there is no freaking strafing in Ratchet and Clank 1. Which is actually a common criticism for the series, well not the series, the, the first game. Because, you know, every game after it had the strafing mechanic and, um, you know, it would be nice if it had it, but, um, it's not a deal breaker for me. Like, it's actually a deal breaker for some people for this game to not have strafing, but, uh, I mean, I can get past it. It's, uh... I, fi I figure it out. Um, okay. Anyways, um, let's see. Let's see. I think I can just take this guy out in one. Well, if I actually, if I can actually hit him with the bomb, maybe. Okay, hold on. No, actually, you need two bombs to take him out. Hello, that's a helicopter. Hold on. Let me, uh, just... Uh, that actually doesn't reach. Shit. Uh, where does it reach? There we go. Wow. Okay, we're having trouble with this guy already. Uh, let me just... Hold on. I mean, oh, okay, we have a thousand already, actually. That works. Uh, I'll actually, I'm actually gonna go ahead and... Go back to the course now, and... Get the swing shot so I don't forget later because I think I, I think we are gonna need it for something. Are we? Actually, we might not. Maybe I'm just insane. Yeah, I might actually just be insane. Oh, okay, we'll go back for the thing later. I do need now though is to get up here. Can I get up here? Just no. Okay, we'll come back for that later too. That's a lot of things that we're gonna come, have to come back for later. Okay, can I just... Nope. Okay, hold on. There we go. And, uh... Let's see. There we go. Okay. So, uh... Little tip over here, if you... Okay, for example, if you take the power answer and you just... You hit someone like once. You know, like you just you tap it. It does about as much damage as um as a wrench attack. You know, a normal wrench attack, and same with the blaster. But if you continuously spray them, uh, the subsequent sprays don't actually do that much damage. So if you want to maximize damage, you can actually just you know tap, you know, tap rather than rather than hold. But um. Boy. Yes, I do. I'm not gonna use it much, but I did know. Anyways, um, yeah. If you want to maximize damage, you can just tap the the tag button instead of holding it down. But that does ultimately take longer, and uh, unless you're really low on ammo, that's not something you really need to consider. Okay. So again, we can use the wrench. Anytime we want, it's just, you know, that's the main, our main source of destroying items, but, uh, enemies do get a little bit trickier as we progress, so, killing them with the, uh, with the wrench becomes less and less viable as, as we go on. Okay, hold on. There we go, we need to push that guy back into the explosive. Okay, you. There we go. Okay. Again, then we're still gonna go back for any bolts that I miss. Is that? It's okay, I thought that was something about that statue, but no, it's just it's just a statue. It only exists to exist. Has no meaning in life. It's just a, it's just a thing. Hold on. There we go. Okay. Let's see. So, way back in the day, I was all I was always like terrified 
of using ammo because I thought it was like I don't know why I had this idea that like ammo I would just run out of ammo really soon and like it would just like be no way of getting it back. And then I kept playing Ratchet and Clank. Oh, actually, the the the, the sign so that you can just gung ho to the entire game. So you know, I sometimes I just waste ammo for the hell of it. Let's see. Ratchet, that's the man we saw on the Infobot. Remember, he knows Captain Quark. Hey, you're that robot guy, right? No, actually, I build robots. I myself am not a robot guy, per se. <laughs> Nerd. I like him. So, now that we've cleared that up, what can I do for you? Well, we saw your Infobot announcement. You were with Captain Quark. We're trying to find Captain Quark. We thought you could help us. Your logic is commendable. However, I haven't seen Captain Quark since we shot that commercial. Say, do you run on standard XP-18 sister boards? Version 7.66. Back at ya. I may be able to help you out after all. How does a helipack upgrade sound? Upgrade? Natch. Since he's a 766, I could have the little guy up and flying in no time. Of course, uh, I'll just need my fee for service. So keep in mind, this is a, a thing in Ratchet and Clank. Everyone... I can't, people are willing to help you if you give them money. No, it's uh, the whole game kind of revolves around the idea of capitalism and you know actually, you know, a society that runs in money, and money is always going to be a big factor in. Okay, at least, at least in the first couple of Ratchet and Clank games, especially this one. But um, yeah, you know that's just something you find out as you pay attention to the game and you watch a couple of videos online that you know explain the thing further. But uh, yeah. Anyways. Wait. Ratchet, am I cool now? <laughs> yeah, you the man, Clank. You're welcome. Alright, so we got the hell effect up with, so this is what we can do now. You know, we have... We have hell effect, hell bad moves, which uh, will be necessary to progress through the game. Yeah, I know, okay, um... So... This is sort of like your method of, like, higher navigation, you know, it lets you get... Jump higher, and it lets you glide, and it lets you, like, long jump. I know there's a lot of things that Mario, for example, can just do on his own, but, um... I know, I kinda like the idea of unlocking this, cause it... It has that weird, like, Mega Man X vibe, where it's like... You keep on unlocking things that make you traver traverse and defend yourself better. Uh, it obviously may not does, doesn't do it quite as well as Mega Man X does, but uh, despite that, I do overall like this game better than Mega Man X. So uh, you know that's the thing. Um, and by when I when I when we per played Mega Man X on stream, that was actually again my first time playing the game. But uh, uh okay. But I still enjoyed it, but uh, it's still not, you know, doesn't top some of the games that I grew up with, like this one. Okay. I almost got hit there. So, again, something else that got fixed in the later games. Um, In this game, when you throw the wrench, you're stuck in that. You're, you're stuck until the wrench gets his, his wrench back. So, in the later games, you're just able to throw the wrench and immediately start moving again. So... You know, it doesn't give you those weird spots where you're just completely defenseless for God knows how long. Okay. Uh, I think we're gonna need the uh, thruster here. Yes, we are. Okay. There we go. And thanks to having the helipad upgrade, I can actually go ahead and... I think this might be the first skill point that I get in this... in our playthrough, so... uh this is somewhat eventful, but not really. Okay, let's see. Let me just first get all the crates here. Let me see if I can see something from down here. Is this over here? No, okay, that's a weird... Almost easter egg, or maybe just they forgot to take something out. Thing. I'll show you guys later. But for now, we need to come down... There. Okay. So you just fly over here. And, uh, okay, hold on, we're almost there. 
boom, and you just you stand under that robot's legs, and you get a skill point for it. Um, we don't actually have a a menu right now to show us the skill points, so you know, unfortunately, I can't really show you guys that. But it uh works. Anyways, can I use this guy to get back up there, or will this guy take me back to? No, okay, I take me back to the vendor. Okay. Let's just get back up there real quick. Should be pretty easy to do. Well, it looks kind of like an intimidating distance, but it's actually not that bad. Alright. Okay. Well, there's no enemies. This does look kind of barren, though, I must admit. Hey, I missed a bolt. Good. <laughs> We've backtracked for a single bolt. And a skill point. What? Did you just get a bunch of bolts for no reason? Yeah, sometimes that will just happen. Like, I think what might be happening over there is that maybe some enemy... Yeah, we just got a bunch of bolts out of nowhere. I think maybe... Some enemy might have, like, accidentally clicked through the floor or something, and then they just... ...fell and died, then, you know, you automatically get the bolts for that. But, uh... I'm not actually 100% sure what happens when that's a thing. Um... It's just, it's just something that, ha that happens when you play the game. Okay. And then you... Hold on. And... Okay. There we go. So we're not actually... Okay, we can get on this thing, but uh, we're still not done here. Alright, so... Something you actually want to do is um, not destroy these crates. Yeah, you want to get on them and get up here. Boom. You don't have to, but you can. Yeah, there's a couple of bolts up here. You know, stuff. Or you could also just use this, like, giant wall of crates. Here, that'll work too. But, um... Actually, I think that's what this one specifically was built for. Or you can, you know, jump here, jump here, and then, you know, boost your way up. But, uh... There are other means to get up here, so... You can you, you you have choices. Okay. I think we're topped on ammo, yeah, because now we're not getting yeah, we're not getting anything for anything else until we actually start wasting them. So whatever. Okay. It's so satisfying to just destroy a giant like mountain of traits. Okay, please. Thank you. Yeah, sometimes ratchet will just hit like as a millimeter away from the, the target you're aiming for. And it's weird. It's annoying, but whatever, it's okay. Not a, not a big deal. It's just a deal. Okay. However, we're not done in this area. We gotta go to the train, but um, first I wanna go over here. Okay. And there's just a bunch of robots here. Dark creatures and... Okay, is there any more? Uh, is this guy that's asleep here. Well, he's not asleep anymore. And once again, this, um... This Antina thing. This one. Um... Again, we can't do anything with that right now. And that would have been useful here. But, uh... You know, it's not, a, it's not a goal at the moment. Okay. But there is a gold ball up there. So that's, that's, that's why we came here for. Okay. So... Is that it? I think that might be it. Hold on. Can I get up here through here? Oh, I can. Okay, cool. There we go. Did I miss any bolts? I keep... Hold on. Is that actually what I feel comfortable with? The camera? Okay, I keep doing this weird. Maybe it is what I actually feel more comfortable with in this game. Ah, uh, maybe. Okay, whatever. Let's, uh... I don't know, again, sometimes my brain just doesn't compute what I actually want with the camera. And... I end up just kind of doing whatever. Okay, I believe there were a couple of Pyrosis Rammers here, though. Like, right here. Take it. Okay, boom. We're back to full Pyrosis um, ammo. Which is nice. I just got a bolt. I just got another bolt. <laughs> again, sometimes you just get bolts. Like, it just happens. And you're not entirely sure why. But, uh... Okay, let's see. 
They're not box. Oh, okay, because those guys are shooting things. I think there was supposed to be a few more crates over there. Yeah, that guy keeps shooting. It's not reaching me, but no, it's kind of kind of rude. Okay, so I think I can actually just. I oh, okay, my voice is cracked like hell. Ah, we can't do it very efficiently when this thing is moving. Okay. So it might actually just be easier to... Hold on. If we can actually push them off the edge, that actually works too. And they even make a little sound for it. But uh... Whatever. Okay, whatever. And then this guy... Hold on. There. Okay. Let me just wait for the bolts to come back. There we go. Okay, let's go ahead and get over here. Okay. And there's also nothing in the furnace, which is kind of weird. Ow. So I've actually just been killing these guys before they even let you guys show what they can actually do. So they drop like these mines. And you can blow them up. Um, but, uh, you know, if, you, if you're quick enough, you don't, you can kill them before they even get a chance to place any mines. So that's convenient. Uh, let's see. Uh, I missed the mine. There we go. Okay, you. Oh. Okay. I think that's the other... Oh, hold on, there's a couple bolts back here. Go grab them. You know, I don't think I've actually ever taken the time to go back into the train. I don't know why. Is there anything back here? I don't believe so. But I, I, I swear there's a secret in one of these kinds of buildings. We'll go into it later. But, um, I almost just fell off. I think I've only taken, like, one point of damage in this entire playthrough so far, which is... Uh, not super impressive, considering these are the first couple of levels, but still, I'll give myself a pat on the back for that. Okay, so here's the info bot. Let's go ahead and take care of that. Greetings, Executive German Drek. Dispense with the pleasantries, Lieutenant. My sources tell me you're behind schedule. You must prepare this planet to be harvested for our new world. Yes, sir. As you can see, everything is moving along as planned. I'm counting on you, Lieutenant. As your former commander can tell you, I don't take disappointments well. Yes, sir. I won't fail. Drek is destroying yet another planet. Yeah, but if that's the kind of help he's getting, I don't think we have anything to worry about. You should not underestimate Chairman Drek. He is quite dangerous. We must find Captain Quark. Look, that lieutenant doesn't seem so tough. Let's take him out ourselves. Perhaps we can persuade the lieutenant to tell us where Drek is. <laughs> now you're talking. You know, Ratchet really likes to get into the action of things. Like, he's just kind of been thrust into this adventure. He, 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 just, he just rolls with it, man. That's what I like about Ratchet. He just goes with it. He's, he technically didn't have anything better to do back at home. So he's like, hey, you know, let's go ahead and save the planet, the, the world. I mean, the universe. Real quick. Well, okay, no, the, not the universe, the galaxy. Uh, that is technically the worlds in Ratchet and Clank. Uh, the, they are galaxies. You know, sometimes you... Some games have worlds as small as just, like, a single section in a city. Other games, like Ratchet and Clank, have an entire freaking galaxy for you to roam around. Maybe some even have universes. And some have multiverses, you know, like... But if Dragon Ball Xenoverse technically works with multiverses rather than just universes. Because of, you know, Dragon Ball Super introducing that whole concept. And, uh, but anyways, that's, that's a different story for a different day. As I just wanted to come over here to, to, uh, get a couple of bolts. But I believe we're done with this general area. I believe so. Anyway, so from here you can actually check. Down there, there's like a, there's like a thing, and there's some boxes down there. So it always does does serve to um 
you know, look around. But uh, a lot of these things I kind of just figured out by accident. So, that's interesting. We'll be coming back down there. Well, we actually do that now. Might as well. Hold on. And again, we also now have enough to go back and buy the slingshot. The slingshot. The swing shot. <laughs> a slingshot is something completely different. Okay, hold on. Let's, uh, let's go down here. Okay, cool. Well, there's a gold bolt. That's convenient. And if you're wondering how we get back out of here, there's gonna be a taxi coming in. But, um... Okay, yeah, there's one right there. The animation for getting those is always the same. Which, uh... Jack and Dexter did kind of do better in that department of having a different animation for every new thing you get. But there's something else we can do down here. You know, we can just... Destroy all these cars. I think eventually we get us... Actually, no, hold on. You don't get a whole lot of balls for doing this, but, um... I think in some planets... And, and not just in this game, but like in pretty much every Ratchet and Clank game, you do get skill points for destroying a, a certain amount of ships. And um, that's kind of interesting. Uh, you, are, you are gratefully re rewarded for destruction of innocent society. But uh, in order to get a skill point here, we don't need to destroy those common cars. We need to destroy the, uh, the blimp. Uh, at least one of the blimps, and we don't have the necessary means for that right now, so uh, you know, there's not much I can do about it at this precise moment in time, but we'll be able to do it later. Also, you can run around in the taxi, but you can't actually fall off, you know, there's in invisible walls up here. Okay, you don't see them, but they are there once you get on a taxi, and then once the taxi stops, it stops to, to you know, to come back to not being there, so... Alright, anyways, again, there's still two things that I have to do here. I have to get the, um... Okay, technically three things. I have to finish the, the obstacle course under a certain amount of time. I have to get that gold pole that was over there. And I need to buy the uh, swing shot. So let's go ahead and... Let's go ahead and go in full speed ahead mode. Okay. I don't know what's the time that I need to actually finish this, but, um, you know, I need, probably need to do it pretty quick. Okay, hold on. I'm trying to focus on, I, I'm pretty sure if I mess up once, it's not gonna, I'm not gonna be able to do this fast enough, so, whatever. Okay, shit. Alright, alright. Okay, made it. Okay, this... The freaking um, helipad does not, not the helipad. The uh, the helicopter thing does come in handy pretty good for doing this challenge. Okay, let's see if we can get up on time. Okay, good. And hey, wait, come on, damn! Do we get a skill point? Do we get a skill point? I don't know. Here we do, I don't know. Sweet. I bet Captain Quark uses stuff like this all the time. Ha! Real men can swing without silly toys like that. The two of you make me sick. Congratulations on your new Gadgetron Swingshot. Use it on standard versus targets like the ones nearby. If the target is out of view, use the L1 button to aim. So, zero irony. But anyways, uh, that tip about using L1 to aim, I don't do that. There is never a conceivable reason why you should ever use L1 on any target. Ever. Don't know why that's a tip, but whatever. I guess there wasn't a skill point for completing this on time. Maybe it's a different course or something like that? I don't know. It might be. Um... But anyways, uh, now we have the swing shot. We can't actually use the taxi anymore, which, you know, that makes sense. But, uh, anyways, we gotta go back up to the top of that tower one more time to get that, um, 
that gold ball that we saw that we saw earlier. Okay, hold on, try to get places. All right. Okay, so and I don't believe we can get to actually. Hold on, wait, wait can we? Oh no, it is that building over there. There's no way we can get there from here. Also, um. Once we leave this planet and come back, there's actually gonna be enemies in this area. So, that's not in particularly important, but, uh, you know, it's just a thing that happens. Yeah, the, the planets do change slightly once you revisit them. Generally speaking, there's less enemies and less box to break once you go back into a planet. But, um... I think there are a couple of things that, you know get added to them. Most most things get taken out, but some things get added. Okay. But uh, anyways, we gotta go down there now to get the other gold bolt. And we can actually see the train from here. That's kind of cool. Uh, kind of hard to move the camera though while I'm also holding X to glide. Okay, we're down here. Boom! There's so many bolts in here. It's awesome. We have plenty of cash for whatever weapon is gonna be available in the next level, but I'm... Um, I might actually try to save it, because pretty much every planet asks some amount of money from you. And, uh, you know, that's the thing. Okay. Let's look at, look at all these boxes. How can, how could you possibly resist? But anyways, uh, I believe that's all the boxes in here. You know, the ball scrapped. Yes. I think so. Okay, so we're actually gonna keep our slingshot out. I keep saying slingshot, it's a swing shot. It, it doesn't sling, it swings. Okay, I think I see it over there. Maybe not. Yeah, that's right, right here. For some reason, they just put that there. It makes no sense, and we just die now. There is no benefit to that thing. It's just, they, they, I think they literally just forgot to take it out. But, um, that's okay. Now we can... It actually did save when we got the, um, the gold bolt. So, um, uh, you know, that's the thing. Also, when you die, all the, uh, breakable objects become, you know, like they respawn. Not the boxes, but the, uh, the, break the breakable objects do. And, uh... If you're going for one of those skill points that require you to break a certain amount of items, uh, you really don't want to die. It it doesn't help you in any way, shape, or form. Okay. Let me get some more water. Alright, so once again we have two options. We could actually go to Iridia now, or we could go to Eudora, the logging site. But I think the logical thing to do now would be to go to Aridia. I think we don't we don't actually get new planet coordinates nice. here. We just get a couple of other items. So that's what we're going to be doing. And uh, considering the amount of time we've been taking so far... Hmm. I might... Okay, I might have to make this the last planet I can do tonight. Because uh, we are currently at an hour and 20 minutes in. The stream and it's taking about half an hour ish, maybe a bit more per level. The trouble is, was especially long though. I must admit that was that is, but that's one of the bigger levels in the game. But um, yeah, we might it depends on how much time left we have here because I know Eudora, the next planet, is pretty short actually. Hold on, let me go ahead and get this bolt. Yeah, not all... The balls don't always um, come towards you when they fall into something that you shouldn't be going into. So, uh... Also, you can't actually fall on this. It doesn't instantly kill you. But it's like... Quicksand. So... What the, the way this kind of... Things work is that you can actually fall in once... Okay, hold on. Once... Twice... And you, you, you get two chances to escape. After the third one... You, you don't get a chance anymore, so you know don't, don't do that. But uh, yeah, so that's kind of cool. 
All right. Um, do we have two choices over here? We can go over there, or we can go over here. I personally like to go over here first. But, um, yeah, we're gonna definitely need the freaking pyrositor for this too. So make sure we have that on. And here's Skid McMarks. It's him, Skid McMarks. That man from the Infobot. In the flesh, little dude. You guys get a load of that epic space battle I was in? We saw ya, screaming for help. Uh, that was like a war cry. My agent and I got ambushed on the way to hoverboard practice. Did he survive the crash, sir? Yeah, he's okay. But I've had a little trouble getting back to my ship due to my sprained ankle. Oh, come on. If you can take out all the sand sharks, I just might have a spare hoverboard for you. We'd love to help you, Mr. McMarks, but Ratchet and I need to find Captain... Shh. One of your boards? Hmm. I've always wanted a decent hoverboard. Well, all right. You just keep that foot elevated. So again, it comes back to the point. Everyone is willing to help you if you're willing to help them first. Nobody's just going to do something for you. All right. But, um... Okay, and again, that does kind of make sense for the real world. In, in the real world, nobody is just going to do things for you. But anyways, there is a certain amount of um, uh, sand sharks that we have to take care of. You see it down there in the counter. And there's also the actual like spawners of them. And those spawners are actually weak to the Parasitor. I mean, this game doesn't really have much of an like, element, elemental weakness uh, system. It's just some enemies are particularly weak to some weapons. It's not Mega Man levels of weakness exploitation, it's just a thing. Also, this cactus is not breakable for some reason. Again, we weird inconsistency. Some items that are breakable are not always breakable, but um, for the most part it's fine. Like, I think I, and back in the day where I used to play these games like... Back when I didn't have as many games as I do now, so the few games that I did have, I knew them like the back of my head. I actually like even memorized which specific props in in the levels were breakable and not. I probably don't remember those misly details anymore, but um, hey, if I if I do, I'll let you guys know. Also, as you can see over here in the quick select, we actually have the swing shot as one of the things. So we've seen this gadget menu already. Uh, well, okay, we have actually seen the gadget menu, but um, in the quick select, you do, you can use put gadgets in here instead of weapons, and um, I believe each level kind of uses like one or by the time by later levels, each each level will require like one or two different gadgets, uh, maybe three sometimes. So what you can do is, uh, you know, go to your quick select and put the gadgets that you need for you'll need for that level, and then the rest of them you can keep it on weapons, or you can do what I do and just have every single. Once you get them all, you have every single gadget available to you at all times in the quick select, and just have like your three favorite weapons up there and like two or three favorite weapons in the uh, in the selection. But um. And just for the sake of using weapon variety, I might actually, um... I might actually try to do something different. They're also sand sharks. Jesus Christ. But again, with the Parasitor, this is this is no problem. The Parasitor is a pretty useful weapon, all things considered. Like, not just in here, like, pretty much throughout the whole game. It is gonna be a useful weapon. Um... Now, some levels it's not as useful for. But uh, it, it is nice that they do give it to you as early in the game as they did, because, again, it is going to come in handy. Pretty much, it's pretty much the first go-to item for taking care of hordes of enemies. Hordes of small enemies, I mean, specifically. Not the big enemies, but... I don't think big enemies go come in hordes very much in this game, but if they ever do, uh, the Parasitor is not what you want to use for them. Okay, hold on. So you can you might have gotten a glimpse of it spawning a sand shark over there, so that's how they work. So that's why you gotta take off the spawners first. Um, 
pre yeah. Okay, so again, this is pretty. Again, this is pretty easy so far. Okay, not like super easy, but you know, easy enough. And also, I freaking love the music in this game. It's so funky. It's, well, not, okay, not funky, but it's like so techno, so so catchy. I think is what I'm, the word I'm looking for. Um. Now, of course, there is always the um. I don't think it, the Ratchet and Clank 1 has some of the better stuff. Okay. One key difference between Ratchet and Clank 1. Oh, not Ratchet and Clank 1. The, the first couple of Ratchet and Clank games. Um, as compared to the later games, the future franchises specifically. Is that the, the first, like, PS2 games uh, had this, like, techno beat about them. Hold on. Here, yeah, man. Catch a brand new Z3000. You can't even buy these. Well, I got a bail. Catch you dudes at the hoverboard races. You've just acquired a Gadgetron Z3000 hoverboard. Use your new hoverboard at the racetrack in Blackwater City on Plank Grill Golf. We don't have the coordinates for that yet. Anyway, so what I was gonna say is that, um. In this game, the um, in this couple of the first games in the PS2, like the music is very techno-ish. It um, you know, like there's there's like two sides of the Ratchet and Clank universe. There's the uh, the universal like galactic travel side of it. You know, discovering new planets and you know there's aliens and all sorts of stuff like that. And then there's also like the very mechanical like engineering side of Ratchet and Clank. I feel like the first couple of levels, I mean the first, the first games, like Ratchet Clank 1, 2, 3 and maybe Deathlock, uh, the music reflects the like mechanical engineering side of the franchise, whereas the future games, the PS3 games, um, the music in those games reflects the, the space travel aspect a bit more, you know, those, those feel a bit less techno catchy and more just like epic. Uh, you know, whatever, it's fine. I still like those games, but um, I think I like the music in this game better. Oh, yeah. There's actually no new weapons here. Alright, well, that, that's fine. We're, do we're doing just fine with the weapons we currently have. There's a couple of lanch uh, sand shots here, but it's okay. Hello, Mr. Man. Hold on. I wish the bomb love this just a little bit more damage, but at the same time, it's okay. It is your starting weapon. Can't expect it to be too powerful. So we're given to you for free. After all. Okay. So. I have a flower here. Uh, again, there's a lot of cool decoration a a lot around the levels. But, um. You know, when you're just going around exploding things. Sometimes you don't have the time to appreciate it. But, you know. When you take a little bit of, like, game design classes or something. You learn to appreciate this stuff a bit more. Which I have. Very good. Um, okay. Well, anyways, that's the whole going into college for game design and anything like that. That's that's an entirely much more complex subject for a different day. Uh, I may go into that at some point, but uh, it is not something. It is not something you just casually mention whilst playing video games. Surprisingly or not. Well, you know, you can be, but. I mean, we're, this is not what we're talking about right now. Okay, anyway, whatever. Uh, and this thing, look right here, it's just it's like a little robot. It's working, and there's just like trails of it. And it's, it's it's nice detail that you don't really notice much when you just go into a level casually, but once you take your time to go through a level with a bit more, more caution, more care, start noticing this sort of stuff more. Okay. Okay. Let's see. So, there's a couple of cacti here just hiding behind. You can't break them. Eventually. Hold on. I know I can break you. There we go. I'm not sure why, but it doesn't actually break. It's just there is one, like, back here somewhere. And it just, that's, that's what breaks it. Okay. Um... Is that fire right here or is that something else? It might be something else. Okay. Also, um...
I'm not sure if I need to turn the brightness up, because I'm seeing the stream window and it does look kind of dark. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not sure if there's actually anyone watching the stream right now, so I can't ask them to say, Hey, is it too dark? Is it too quiet? Is it too loud? Whatever, I guess I'll just have to double check the stream out. Just so, again, this is the first stream of the game, so every time we start a new game, you know, we gotta like double check, see what's happening in the... Um, you know, what needs to be adjusted, but uh, on the first stream itself, it's just gonna be weird. Uh, the next streams after this probably we're gonna have things fixed, or you know, whatever needs fixing will get fixed. But until I can check, I won't actually know. All right. So let's. Uh... Okay, so now we're in like a weird construction site, which again, I think this whole thing is a construction site. Uh, that was hiding on the ground. Again, it's not a perfect game. Yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty freaking good, but it's not perfect. Okay, hold on. There we go. I'm not sure why they put all those crates there, but that's okay. Also, there is no, like, bonus for, um, getting all the boxes in a level or anything like that. So it's not, it's not like Crash Bandicoot. You don't have to worry about that. But, I mean, I personally just like to get as many crates as possible. So I like to get as many bolts as possible. Yes, that's how it works. Okay. Um, so again, we haven't gotten the, the swing shot. If we, have, if we had come here first, before going to Metropolis, we wouldn't be able to do this section at all. So that's why I said to, you know, get yourself the... Um, it's always good to go to Metropolis first before you go into kill one. I mean, not kill one. Yeah. I am aware of this woman. You don't have to tell me. Anyways, um. I already did. You don't. You don't need to tell me. Okay. So there's a skill point we can get around here. Anyways, well, yeah. So you should always go to Metropolis before you come here to uh to Aridia. Or what's the name of this place again? Okay. Anyway, is this where the skill point is? No, not here. Um. Okay. We're almost done. Wait, hold on. Get me out of here. Ow. I was trying to grab onto things, but the freaking box got in the way. That's dumb. Okay, whatever. That's okay. We've only lost one point of health. Doesn't matter. Okay, so here's where the skill point is. Uh, let's see. Hey. Boom. So the way you get that skill point is just by going to that particular obstacle course without um, without ever touching the ground. Which is actually pretty easy to do. I mean, it's, it sounds intimidating, but it's actually you know, fairly easy. You just have to... You basically just have to keep holding circle. And just know where the uh, the swing shot points are. Okay. And originally I thought it was actually for the entire course, not just that section. So I like busted my ass of trying to like never hit the ground at all, at, like any point during this entire like section of the level. Not 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 just this, but again the entire swing shot course we've just taken. And uh, needless to say, that was not fun. It was stupid. Okay. Anyway, let's get this thing. Yes. Using the latest in precision laser technology, the Gadgetron Trespasser is guaranteed to work on Gadgetron's line of Invinso lock security doors. So this is strictly a uh, a mini game puzzle like gadget. Which I don't like it too much, but anyways, you might have noticed that there was like a a swing shot point up here, and you might wonder like, wait, wait, what is that there? We, we don't need we don't need it for this. Well, you come down here and boom, there's a cold bolt. You know, you gotta pay attention. You gotta pay attention to detail. If there's something that might be kind of off, then go ahead and make sure like check above you, check below you, check everywhere. And there might you might actually find a secret. All right, so the way you work, you gotta. Put the trespasser on you stand on this thing. If we didn't have the trespasser, it would be red. You know, you have to have the trespasser and they'll turn like that. 
Aim the lasers at the receptors on the outside ring to turn them green. All receptors must be green before the invincible lock will open. Yeah, so basically we just gotta... Like, each ring has its own, like, things, so you just gotta move them until they are, they're all hitting something. And right now, this one's... I know, it is okay. And, uh, you know, you just, you just gotta make sure that all the lights are green. And I, that one was the first one, obviously, so it's gonna be really easy. But this get really hard later on. Okay, so we could just take the elevator down, but we can also go in style. Boom. Just drop down. Thankfully you don't take fall damage in this game, so you can just do that and it's okay. Okay, but that was the trespasser. We're definitely gonna need that for like throughout the game. But uh, now we gotta go back to the main route. Just or we gotta find Skit's agent. I don't think he actually has a name, he's just Skit's agent. Okay. Okay, he probably, he probably does have a name, I just don't remember it. Right on top of my head, because he always just referred to him as Skit's agent. Also, you can actually see the robots you know, fixing stuff up there. So, if you pay attention to your environments, you'll know when there's an enemy coming. Um. Okay, hold on. I don't know how I not I didn't get hit by that. I feel like I should have gotten burned at least twice. But I'll take it. I will certainly take it. Okay. So we missed the man. Hold on. There we go. Uh, just an explosion of stuff. Okay, balls. All the balls. It's so much fun getting this. Oh yeah, yeah. Again, I'm having a lot of fun with this game. As I'm as I always have. This is not my first time playing this game, it's more like my, like, 15th time playing this game. Um, it's enjoyable every time, so I got a lot of replayability just for being fun. But again, um, I did, I do still really want to play ahead in time when that eventually gets released on PS3. I mean PS3, PS3, PS4. But, I don't know what's going on with Gears of Breakfast, like... There must have been something that was out of their control so they couldn't release it on time. Cause, yeah, I had in time, didn't come out on time, blah 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 blah, with puns, but um... Yeah, my, my, my CM can kind of work, because... We technically only have one more... One month left of fall. But that's something I don't think a lot of people realize, um... Uh, you know, the, the Christmas season is usually related to with, um... With winter? But in actuality, yeah, okay, Christmas itself is on winter, but the majority of December is actually uh, a f on the fall season. So, you know, technically speaking, Christmas season is mostly composed of, um, of fall, not winter. Christmas itself is winter, but Christmas season, the holidays as we, as we like to call them here in America, you know, they are, um, they are, uh, what's his face? Yeah, you, you, you know what I'm trying to say. Okay, this is, okay, that one's not actually accessible, never mind. Okay, let's see. Uh, then again, some countries don't actually have, you know, something to keep in mind is that not every country has all four seasons. Like, for example, if you're in the... If you're in a country that's more or less in the equator, like, like you know, somewhere in North South America, in the northern section of South America, or the southern section of Central America, or maybe certain African countries and Asian countries, um, I mean, I don't know for sure, but you probably don't get that many seasons over there. Like, you might get winter and summer, even though the winter might not have that much um, snow. And by that, not that much snow, I mean no snow at all. And, uh, you know, the summers might not be quite as extreme. But anyways, you know, that's just a different conversation for a different day. Okay. And did I miss anything? Any, did I miss a single bolt? I don't think so. Okay. 
You know, if you come fresh off of Spyro, like, imagine you're back in 2002, when this game came out, and you've been playing Spyro games through your childhood, and then this game comes out, like, you're probably, you're probably gonna have that Spyro mentality of, like, don't miss a single item, you piece of shit, you will die. Anyway, hold on, no, that's not what I meant to say. That's what I meant to say, that's not what I meant to do, okay, there. There's actually a gold bolt around here. Nothing else, though. I mean, you, you can explore these guys, and you can, you know, on top of them and you know, jump around them and shit. But, uh, I don't know, they kind of forgot to, like, put items here. Other than the gold bolt that's, like, over there or something. Yeah, that's over there. Uh, I feel like they definitely could have done a bit more with this area, but you know what? Whatever. I didn't make the game. I just played the game. Okay. Cool. Alright. So, um... I think that's all I can do here again. There are no items in that area for some reason. Let's go ahead and get back to, um... Better get back over here. Can I make that jump? I should be able to. Yeah, okay. If I, if I hadn't been able to do that, I would have had to go back up to that entire section again. Which is not that bad. Okay, so we can actually get up there. Once we have the correct item. Well, we don't have the correct item right now, so I can't. Okay, whatever. No signal whatsoever. This downtime is killing me. Do you need medical attention, sir? Don't be so literal, son. The problem is I'm stranded on this backwater planet and my star client is nowhere to be found. Hey, we saw you on that info bot. You're Skid's agent. Was Skid's agent. Haven't seen him since our ship crashed. And an agent without a client is like a flea without a dog. Say, you look like an athletic kid. If you can bring back the championship prize from the hoverboard races in Blackwater City, I'll make you my next star. We have no time for trivial matters, sir. Hmm. I could be the next Skid McMarks. Bring the prize from the hoverboard races. Okay, so we can't actually complete this, um, this mission, this quest now. We have to... Do something else. Also, I love the freaking like ex like facial animations and you know like the articulation that the characters do in this game. It's so well made. Like they have so much. The characters have the characters have a lot of character. I I love it. I love it when the characters have freaking character. It's awesome. And the Ratchet and Clank remake, like the PS4 remake, they seem to not have that quite as much. Like they look a lot more realistic, but they're not nearly as expressive as they were here. I don't know. I haven't actually played it, but I've seen some of it. I don't know. There's something about it that doesn't strike me the right way. But I won't. I will reserve judgment until I actually play it myself. Anyways, we've been recording for an hour and forty. Holy oh, Jesus Christ! An hour and forty-five minutes. So um, yeah. If I end the stream now, it'll be kind of short. So I know that Eudora is actually not that long of a planet. So let's go ahead and take care of this real quick. There's only like two routes that we have to take. So it won't be particularly long. Is there a cut in here? Hold on. Yes, there is. Yes, quite lovely. That should just about do it. Commander, we are finished with this world. Commence towing our planet to its next destination. Lieutenant! Yes, sir. You have fulfilled your tree quota. Barely. We are ready to return to base. Not so fast, Lieutenant. Just because we don't need any more trees doesn't mean they should have them. Destroy everything. <laughs> Drag, doesn't that technically cost you money? I mean, put the cruelty aside. You're technically just wasting money by asking them to keep working for no reason. I mean, I mean, if you, if you got the money for, if you got the money to be evil. Then by all means, but not all, not all of us can afford to be evil, you know. It's, just, it's not it's not it's not fair for some of us. All right, whatever. Let's go ahead and take care of this. Okay, so you gotta go over here because you're two of them, and then you gotta come like over here, and then you there we go. Okay. So I'm sure some people have those puzzles memorized. I just kind of do them. I just look at them and I, okay, this goes here, that goes there, whatever. Again, I've played this game a lot, but I don't... 
I haven't I haven't played it like a freaking well, What is Ratchet, I didn't ask you to fucking wall jump. Why would you do that? Uh, okay, whatever, well, it's just right here. It is a minor inconvenience. It is okay. Okay, let's just hope he doesn't do that again. Okay. Alright. Okay. This thing turn around. Brings in some the swing shot thing is yeah, we use the swing shot a lot in this in this game. And pretty much any game that has the swing shot. Well, okay, I'm not sure about all of them, but uh, I know this game when Ratchet and Clan going commando uses it a lot. Up your arsenal. I haven't played up your arsenal in a while. I get a pretty long freaking time. I mean, I played it a lot back when I first got it on PS2, but um, since then I haven't really touched it a whole lot. So um. I'll have to replay it one of these days, because I do like it. I, I actually don't like it quite as much as Ratchet and Clank 1 and 2. Like, most people say that Up the Arsenal is the best one of the, tri of the trilogy. I would disagree, mostly out of nostalgia more than anything, but I, mean, I still like it. It's just maybe not quite as much as, uh, you know, this game. And the, the Going Commando. But anyways, yeah, uh... For those wondering which Ratchet and Clank games we're gonna be playing, we're probably gonna be playing like most of them. Definitely 1, 2, and 3, and the future games 1, 2, and 3, and maybe a couple of other ones. Not all, we're not gonna be playing every single one of the Ratchet and Clank games, but we are gonna be playing a fair amount of them. Alright. Sure showed him. I suppose I did. Is your current occupation leaving a rotten taste in your mouth? Then you need to know about BTS, Blog Tactical Research Station. Hi, I'm Supreme Executive Chairman Drek, and we here at BTS are seeking motivated individuals to fill positions in these exciting careers. Grind boot tester. Warhead Assembly Technician, Mutant Animal Husbandry, Robot Repair Man, Suck Cannon Test Dummy, and Administrative Assistant. So call BTS. Build our weapons while you build your future. I'm calling BTS today. Now we're talking. Did you see all the cool gadgets they're making? Let's go get some. No, we must continue our search for Captain Quark. You're absolutely right. I am? Sure. We need to find Quark. Although when we find him, wouldn't it be nice to be able to tell him where Chairman Drek is? I suppose. Well, we go to the space station and talk to the scientists. They work for Drek, so they're bound to know where he is. I am unsure about your logic. Ah, you think too much. Come on, let's go. So, hey Ratchet, funny you mentioned about wanted to get one of the gadgets that were shown in that commercial because one of the gadgets shown in that commercial is right here in Planet Eudora and that's what we're gonna be getting now technically we can just leave now because that's the other thing we're gonna be getting it's actually optional but of course I'm not just gonna leave it there that, that despite the fact that it is an optional item that is the chunk of this level so we're gonna be making make sure that we can we can take care of that Okay, anyways, let's uh, okay, we don't need to come over here right now, but I'm, I'm doing it anyways, clearing the area for when we do come back here. Okay, also maybe you do get a skill point for destroying these chips. Hold on. Yeah, destroy a bunch of them and you eventually get a skill point for it. Yeah, we might as well go ahead and do that. We're probably gonna, it's gonna probably gonna take a couple of minutes to do, so it might take some of, our, some of our time. But hey, you know, whatever. We're having fun here. Okay, hold on. Can I destroy you from here? I'll be coming this way. There we go. How about you? Hello? No. A couple more. Eh. Okay, you're kind of coming this way. 
Okay, I didn't manage to. Hello! Hey, you. There we go. Okay, yeah. We don't actually get balls for them, though, so there's no point in keeping destroying them. Okay, you. Well, you have a you have an axe, so I'm just gonna. <gasps> if 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 he wants an axe battle, I can give him an axe battle, all right. Even though this is a wrench, not an axe, but you know it kind of looks like an axe in a weird way. Okay. Anyway, we just came from there. Yeah, from here. No, 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 we didn't. This is this is just a small area. I'm, I am drunk. <laughs> I am completely drunk, and I should not be playing video games right now, even though. Okay, I've never been drunk a day in my life, but um, I do know people do love their. I know I do know people love their drunk gaming, so uh, you know if I was someone that drinks, then maybe I would enjoy playing video games while drunk. Also, there's just a gold bolt up here. You would be surprised how hard this was for me to find when I was playing this game for the first time, but um, yeah, it's just right there. I guess I never explored that area, but um, if you're having trouble with gold balls, there is something that will make it easier to find them later. Um, but anyways, hello, there's a new weapon here. Some great bargains for you today. Has a glow of doom. That's pretty good, actually. I might as well go and buy this now. Okay, so the glow of doom basically kind of works like you you throw like a thing. And then, like, a bunch of, like, a swarm of, like, minion dudes come. Like, not not the, the, not the despicable me minions. No, 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 I'm talking about just, like, normal minion robots. And, um, it's pretty cool. I actually don't use it a whole lot, but, um, the idea, you know, the concept of it is pretty cool. Also, I just wanted to destroy that guy for no reason other than I could. All right. Let's see. I don't know why I just have this need to always whip out the Pyrocitor on these like small enemies. Even though I could technically just take care of them with the wrench, that might actually be easier. But whatever, that's okay. That's, just, that's how I'll play the video game. Okay. Uh, let's see, we can actually get up here. And I believe this is where that antenna thing is gonna be. Yeah. Again, this, this, we keep finding this thing, and that's actually this is related to the um, to the quest with the with Skid's agent in the in in Aridia, the planet we were just at. So uh, you know, once we complete that, those antennas will actually make sense. Till then, though, we can't really do much with them. Okay, and up here is just otherwise it's just bolts up here, so we don't need to come to this area, but you know, bolts. We gotta get all the bolts, man. Alright. Can I send a mushroom? I can't, okay. There are a lot of, in of um, items you can just clip through in this game. Which, again, I don't blame them much for it, because... There are, there are a lot of details in this game. So, it's only natural that not everything is going to be... Gonna have collision. I think, honestly, I think if every single item in this game had collision, you would actually have a really hard time navigating to certain areas. Because again, there's just so much. Like, imagine if every single flower or those those grass things had collision. That would just be terrible. So again, I'm, I'm I'm okay with not everything having collision. Flipping through everything is not always a, t a bad thing. I think maybe I don't know. Game design. It's a thing you. It's a thing you that requires a lot more thought than you might think it does. And I'm pretty sure you you already think it requires a lot of thought. It requires even more than you're already thinking. A little butterfly. That's just like a normal Earthling butterfly. And I'm pretty sure it's the only organic life form we're gonna see in this planet. That is just a thing that happens. Again, some some planets are actually primarily come. Uh, populated by robots and you know they're actually entire societies composed by robots rather than organic creatures and oh, okay no these guys are okay those are blarks though um ow um yeah the blarks are the um the same species as drake is and um 
What was I say? And he doesn't take they belong here. He's, the the Blarks just kind of invade the entire galaxy. They only belong in planet Orkson, I believe it's what it's called. And we will be coming over there later, but not right now. Right now we're, we're wearing Eudora. And they're not supposed to be here, so we gotta take them out. Okay, there's a couple more robots here. Okay. Let's see. Okay, there we go. Okay, I was a bit too close to that explosion, but whatever. I think there is a weird soft spot that you can have where um, you can actually hit an explosive crate with one of these attacks, you know, like the close range attacks, and it won't hit you. But I don't know that specific soft spot. It's just, it's there somewhere. Also, it just almost looks like, a, like, like it was going to be an area. But then they didn't figure out what to do with it, so they were just like, I never mind, just, 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 just seal it off. Don't actually let them go in there too far. Too far. Okay. Hello? Okay, you. There we go. Yeah, the blaster is pretty useful. It's also gonna be useful for some, like, special skill points and... Solving some optional puzzles that will make traversing two levels easier. So, um, it is something you want to get regardless of whether you're using much or not. But it will come in handy for things besides fighting. Um, kind of. But, um, well, so you can actually just come up here and not have to fight those guys. And I'm actually not even sure if these guys can shoot up here. Well, I guess we're about to find out. But um, yeah, it is just so you can get all these bolts up here. But we're gonna we're gonna be coming back down there to kill everyone else. Okay, what is that? Yeah, there is a bolt. Okay, can you shoot up here? I am directly above you. Why are you recognizing me? All right, one. I guess they can't actually shoot because they were, they were just standing there. Okay. There we go. Okay, maybe there isn't quite as much of a damage drop when you shoot in succession as I thought it was. Huh. Okay, whatever. Let's see. Uh, also, we haven't actually used the Glove of Doom yet. I should probably find a spot to use that with. Um, okay, let's go ahead and use it here. I think there's a couple of enemies. Yeah, so that, you just drop it. And a bunch of minions come out. Uh, by a bunch of them, I mean specifically four. So, um... They will... Each of them... Will attack an enemy. And uh, some of them will actually attack the same enemy... Like, you know... Yeah, some of them will actually attack one enemy more than once. And they are smart enough to jump up the platforms. Hey you, buddy. Come on. Okay, I think he's stuck. Okay, whatever. Did I miss any bolts? Well, yeah, I did. <laughs> yes, I did. Hold on. I didn't even realize I missed all these bolts up here. Okay. There we go. Okay. Is there another good spot to drop one of these guys? Eh, sure. And you can just let them do the chaos for you. Oh okay, yeah, it's a pretty cool weapon. I just don't use it much. I kind of prefer to just shoot them rather than let someone else take do the job for me. But whatever. Um, is there an item I'm missing? No, is that a bolt? That is a bolt. What are you doing up there? What are you doing up there? Hey, back here. Hey, thank you. That's weird. How did I get up there? Okay, whatever. Doesn't matter. Let's just go ahead and. Little things. Are you actually gonna be able to follow me up here? I don't think you are. You can't jump that high. Okay, whatever. Let's go ahead and equip the bomb off and you, know, you get on this platform and actually just come like retracts again. And did I miss anything? Uh, I don't think so. All right, let's see. And this guy. I mean. He won't actually attack until we get close to him, so... 
There is no point in doing anything anything that we don't need to do. Okay, then that's the one guy I've been looking at. That's two guys, but that's okay. Uh, right. Okay. I don't know why I just went quiet for so long. I was trying to think of something clever to say and then realized this this is not is not a situation that calls for something clever to say. Just keep commenting on the game as as normal. Sometimes I really want to improve my commentary, but you know, this is a, you gotta have the situation and the and the quick thinking to do that. I don't I, I don't always have it. I miss anything? I don't think I miss anything. No. How will you work in this situation? Oh, let's see. Oh, that is in one hit. Okay, these guys are really freaking strong. They're tiny, but they're strong as hell. Okay. Anyways, we've been streaming officially for two hours and two minutes now, actually. So, uh, yeah, as soon as we as, well, as soon as we are done here, that's when we'll um, that's when we'll stop the stream. So, yeah, we shouldn't be too far off the uh, the two-hour mark. Just a couple of. Just a little bit below. I mean, a little bit above. Nothing terrible. And we haven't actually had any particular streaming, um, like, disasters like we had yesterday with Tulsa Symphonia. Man, I feel really bad about that one. Hold on. Okay. We got a couple of guys here. But... Let's see. Actually, the Glove of Doom is being pretty useful in this particular rooms. So I might actually use it one more time for one more enemy that I need to get. One more set of enemies I need to take care of. Right in there. You see, one, there's one guy right here. Well, not right here. I mean, like, you can see him from here, but there's actually two more. One more, never mind. They killed, they killed one already. Jesus Christ, you guys were fast. Well, there it is. I wasn't, I wasn't even looking at home and they pretty much took care of the job for me. Okay, so there's the uh, there's the thing that we need. So hold on, I, want, I don't want to get too close to it, otherwise it trigger, it'll trigger a cutscene. Okay, now I got all the bolts. Now I can actually get close to it and trigger the cutscene. So yeah, that's how it works. Um, it doesn't actually use like ammo that you purchase. It uses enemies as ammo, and um, you can also I think you can also absorb. No, 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 you can only absorb enemies. I'm thinking of I'm thinking of Blinks the Time Sweeper. In that game, you can also absorb like boxes and items and pretty much anything. And uh, yeah, and uh, it was a cool idea, but not a very good idea. I am like the one person in the entire world that doesn't like Blinks the fucking Time Sweeper. Everyone else does, but not me. Anyway, so once you're done absorbing enemies, the next time you press the circle button, you actually just shoot them. So... You gotta keep holding down the circle button to absorb up to like five enemies. And then after that, you um, that's when you start shooting them, so, you know, that's how that works. It is actually a pretty powerful weapon, but again, it technically has a very specific limited ammo that you can use for it, so... Unfortunately, that's kind of how it works. But anyways, yeah, so again, as, as, as I mentioned, uh, we're pretty much done with the stream now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lead you guys with a preview of the next level. And okay, we can skip that now. So, Block Station, Nebula G34. That's when we will start the stream next time. And there might be a cutscene here. Hold on. Possibly. Nope. Okay, never mind. That was wrong. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, there's the Block Station. Yeah, not everything. Not every place where you're gonna go is gonna be a planet. But it is what it looks like. And it's pretty cool. 
So, but yeah, though so that's all the time I have for you guys today. So I hope you're enjoying Ratchet and Clank. I know I am, and I know I will be. But uh, we're probably gonna be done in this game in like a month. You know, playing playing it once a week. We'll probably be done with it in around a month, give or take. Uh, so yeah, I hope you're looking forward to that. I certainly am. But again, so. Join me next week as we hopefully continue streaming Tales of Symphonia as usual. And we don't have weird issues that prevent me from doing so. And then on Sunday we, you know, come back to Ratchet and Clank. And that'll be a lot of fun. But, uh, yeah. So, well, ladies and gentlemen. This has been all for today. And so here says goodbye. Holoplay45.